from grinding and clawing his way through life, to being on top of the world, to losing everything. Lamar Odom has had a rough life, to say the least. But everything he earned, everything he worked for, was never handed to him on a silver platter. Things like growing up in an unstable family environment, getting caught up in drugs, and even seeing his own child pass away, Lamar Odom's entire life has been one long roller coaster ride. He went from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs, but even then, the haunting memories of his past has always been a burden. In this video, we're gonna take a look at one of the most unique players both on and off the court. A guy who's most renowned for playing alongside Kobe and his back-to-back -back championships. But afterwards, he drastically fell off, and he vanished from the NBA spotlight. What happened to Lamar Odom? What made him into the player he became on the Lakers? And why couldn't he maintain that same level after he left the Lakers? How's going folks? My name's Andy, and without further ado, let's get started. No NBA players ever have an easy path getting to the NBA, let alone getting as drafted as high as Odom did. But his experiences growing up filled him with a sense of pain, yet relief. Relief that he made it. At the age of 12, he lost his mother to colon cancer, and his father was a heroin addict. Odom had a strong relationship with his mother, but after her passing, he would grow up at his grandparents' house, where they developed an inseparable bond. Despite his poor grades and getting involved in the drug scene at school, Odom excelled on the basketball court. Not only did he enjoy the sport, but it was like therapy for him. He played basketball to get his mind off of everything else happening in his life. And by his senior year of high school, he would win the 1997 Parade Player of the Year, including First Team All-American. At this point, there was some speculation that Odom would make the jump directly from high school to the NBA draft. But eventually, he changed his mind, and decided to attend Rhode Island to play Division I ball. Fast forward to 1999. This draft class was one of the stronger ones around that time. Odom was a highly touted prospect. Even some draft analysts compared him to Scottie Pippen. The Clippers were rebuilding and needed a guy like him. So with the fourth pick, they chose Odom. The issue was, nobody knew what to expect. He's so talented, so skilled and versatile, can literally do everything on the basketball court from defending power forwards to running the offense like a point guard. Very few players in history have all those skills. There was a real chance Odom could become the best player of the class, and perhaps a perennial superstar in the league. The questions and uncertainty were all centered around his personality and off-court antics, if Odom's head was in the right place. Kevin Stackholm, a former scout for the Mavs, stated, If you're going to take a chance on him, you have to have enough political will built up to take that chance. If you have to come up with a sure thing, it clouds your judgment. He's not a bad kid. He knows he's not ready, maturation-wise, to jump into this. By his hesitancy, he admitted that. There's a lot of lack of discipline. That's the scary part. Fortunately, all these questions got thrown out the window immediately. In his rookie season, Odom played like everything we hoped for. His versatility, his defense, his ball handling, passing, scoring, they were all there and he could do it all. He would put up averages of over 16 points, nearly 8 rebounds, 4 assists, over a steal and a block, and sported the second highest usage rate on the team. Though the Clippers as a whole <laughs> were still terrible, but Odom brought the franchise a new hope. Unfortunately, perhaps it was too good to be true. Now, as a rich young man, Odom had plenty of money to spend on luxuries, and there was a glaring lack of restraint. By the next few seasons, he didn't improve that much, and instead suffered numerous setbacks. This included two separate violations of the NBA's drug policy. Combined with his declining production, the Clippers decided to move on. 
In the 2003 offseason, they actually had a choice between re-signing Elton Brand or re-signing Odom, and they chose Brand. It was the right choice. Also in this offseason, the Miami Heat took this chance to grab him, to pair him up with D-Wade. In Miami, of all places, Lamar stayed out of trouble and really focused on regaining what he lost. But his time there would be short-lived. Pat Riley and the Heat had a plan, a bigger plan, to turn themselves into a contender. While Odom played quite well in Miami, he would be part of a historic trade package, which sent Shaquille O'Neal to Miami, while he himself was on his way to LA. At this stage of his career, the perception of Odom was perplexing. While he had an absurd amount of talent, he's not the type of guy who can carry an offense. Maybe he's more suited to be a supporting player. That's what he does best, and that's what he remained. It was in Los Angeles where his popularity skyrocketed. Cause you know, playing in LA does that for you. Plus, playing alongside Kobe is another bonus. These six years in Los Angeles were Odom's most memorable, and looking back, he admitted that going to LA changed his life. And that environment with Phil and Kobe and a bunch of veterans greatly helped him mature. On top of that, he had his most productive seasons scoring much more efficiently, as it was easier now since everyone's paying attention to Kobe. But just when everything was looking nice, Odom's six-month-old son, Jaden, passed away. It was devastating, tragic, it absolutely broke him. Odom stated, When he passed, I couldn't even leave the hospital. I just sat there for about three hours and held him. For him, he became numb to all this tragedy in his life. It almost seemed normal for him to feel that way. That's how messed up it is. Once again, he looked to basketball as an escape. Fast forward to 2009. Odom and the Lakers were now on top of the world. Odom embraced his new role as the sixth man, and he captured his first ever championship. But most importantly, he met the love of his life. Khloe Kardashian, as he proposed to her after just one month of dating, as they were madly in love. After all he's gone through, he deserved everything he's worked for and the life that he built from nothing. Odom was the happiest he's ever been. The Lakers are doing great, he's super popular, he has a wonderful wife, and he's now ready to put all that tragedy in the past. Despite everything he's gone through, he finally found the light at the end of the tunnel. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long. With back-to-back -back championships under his belt, Odom was a huge part of the team. But the Lakers organization didn't think that way. They felt like he was expendable, as he discovered that they tried to trade him numerous times. Most notably in the 2011 offseason, which broke the camel's back. While everyone knows the NBA is like any other business, for Odom, the Lakers were his family. The relationships he built with everyone there was stronger than most people he knew outside of basketball. So just to find out his name was in all of the trade rumors, it really hurt him. And as a result, he didn't want to stay anymore. He didn't want to stay in LA. To make matters even worse, his cousin, one of his closest friends, got murdered. You really can't make this stuff up. Tragedy upon tragedy, it doesn't stop. Around this time, Odom considered taking a break from basketball, and it was apparent that he certainly needed some time off. When he joined the Mavs in 2011, he looked completely out of it for his entire time there. By 2013, he came back to LA, played for the Clips a little bit, but retired at the end of the season. Just two years after winning 6th Man of the Year, just three years after winning the championship, the 33-year-old Odom played his final NBA game. Off the court, his family life was also falling apart. Odom's marriage with Chloe wasn't working out and quickly deteriorated. Chloe filed for divorce. In October of 2015, Odom was in a terrible state of mind. 
With the divorce going through and him struggling to make an NBA roster, he spent a weekend at a brothel near Las Vegas. A few days later, he was found unconscious. An ambulance rushed him to the hospital, where it was discovered his lungs had collapsed. He had 12 seizures and 6 strokes. His kidneys were ruptured and his heart stopped twice. It was speculated to be an overdose, which he struggled to cope with for his entire life. His daughter, Destiny, looked at him, saying, I thought it was gonna be my last moment with him. I couldn't believe it, was just in a state of shock. I just told him that I need him to be here, to be present with me, and just to fight. A lot of people were there with him, including Kobe and Phil and Chloe, just to let him know that he has people who support him. Thankfully, Odom survived. As for his NBA career, well, that's a different story. After leaving LA, his heavy use of drugs, especially cocaine, really damaged him physically and mentally. Plus, he gained a lot of weight and had a hard time losing it. Nowadays though, he's doing fine and continuing his recovery, but at his age, I don't see him returning to the NBA. Anyway, that's all folks, that was the rise, the peak, and the fall of a great player. Even with all that he went through, Odom still had a fantastic career. Now, I don't think he lived up to his initial expectations of Scottie Pippen, which is ridiculous, but playstyle-wise, they were distantly similar. He filled a role that every team wants and needs, a versatile small forward who can play, defend multiple positions, jack of all trades, master of none. Just looking at the hand he was dealt, he accomplished so much. Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, let me know your thoughts on Lamar Odom in the comment section, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.